Hey guys, how's it going? Um, today I just have a really quick video on the different types of glue that I use. I always get lots of questions about the difference between the um, Fabri-Tac and the Fabric Fusion and what I use them for. And then, as I mentioned in the last video, I wanted to go over leather edge paint and just kind of show you what I have learned um, while playing around with it. So yeah, let me know what you think below. Leave me a comment, like, share, blah, 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 blah. You know the drill. Enjoy. The first glue that I use that you see in every single video, um, this is the glue that I use to adhere two pieces of cork together or vinyl to cork or just uh, zipper tapes to the cork. This is the glue that I use for everything. Um, I have tried multiple types of glue throughout my sewing career and I was introduced to Fabri-Tac via swoon sewing patterns. I saw a post that Alicia had made many, many years ago and I bought a, a bottle of it and gave it a try and I have never looked back since. Um, I do know that some people use like the E6 or 8000 or whatever that number is. Some people use that glue and they like it. Um, I, I didn't find it to dry fast enough for me. So I, oh, this glue is, the best because it dries so fast and it adheres things so well together so I have this is going to be a slim bifold eventually but just figured that I would show you how quickly it dries and holds the vinyl to the cork so I just apply a thin bead all the way around my open window here and I'm gonna center my vinyl and put it down apply some pressure to it and you can see where the glue is under the vinyl which is why I wanted to show you with this example but so it's taken what it's been about 30 seconds it's not totally dry obviously but this is an this is stuck in there enough that I can hold this piece by the by the vinyl and it's not shifting or moving around because it has already set up so quickly. I would then go and um, sew this even with the glue still being a little bit tacky and it really does not um, build up on your needle and it doesn't cause any issues to my machine that I have noticed. If I am rapid sewing a bunch of wallets all at once, I just made all of these the other day, all these bifolds and I was batch sewing by the color of the thread that I was using, so all the tan ones. And so whenever I would glue all of the pockets together, I would be rapid fire sewing them back to back to back. And at that point, after sewing eight sets of pockets that were glued, I did notice a small bead of glue on my needle, but I was able to just easily pull that off and move on. So. Yes, Beacon Fabri-Tac um, is just the best that I have found. It, it can be a little costly. I think an eight ounce bottle, depending on where you buy it from, is anywhere from 10 to $15. Um, or you can buy it in bulk from Beacon online on their website. I'll link their website below for this exact glue. Um, and yeah, so this is the glue that I always use. So here, that's... I don't even know I've just been talking but it's already ready to you know it's already set up and ready to go so and no shifting no moving like I am actually pulling on it now and it's still staying in place now the other glue that you see in my videos is the Aline's fabric fusion and a lot of people get this one confused with Fabri-Tac so the Aline's I use on the edge of my pieces so if I do not want to do edge paint, I will take a raw edge, like say one of these wallets, I have not completed these yet, and I would burn it first to get all any little fuzzies or anything funky away from, or off the edges. And then I just apply the fabric fusion, and then I use my fingertip and just rub it in. And you'll see it kind of like builds up on your finger and then I just keep going around using that excess glue. And once I'm done, 
I just wipe it because sometimes you get it on the front or the back of your piece whenever you're using the glue and I just take a rag like as you can see I've this rag is just really old and or not old but it's just really gross because I use it to wipe glue and then I just take the rag and wipe off any excess glue that I have and you do want to be sure that you're wiping it off because this glue the fabric or the fabric fusion excuse me it dries slightly glossy so if you have a streak of it on your cork it's gonna be obvious if you roll it in the sunlight you're gonna see that streak of cork so you want to be sure that you're wiping off all of the glue and you need to be careful like in your little crevices like where my pockets meet up here I always have to be careful make sure that I get all the glue off of that little those little areas and then I flip it and wipe the other side the Fabric Fusion dries quickly-ish, nowhere near as fast as the fabric tag. I would not use this to fuse two pieces together. I would not use this to hold my zippers to cork. I would not use this to hold my pockets together. It would just take way too long to dry. But when it comes to applying it to the edges, if you accidentally smear it, like I did right there, there's a little fingerprint I can kind of see, it will show. I don't know if you can pick that up, probably not. I can barely see it, but it's right there. So it dries quick when it's being smeared and you don't get to it quick enough, so you need to make sure that you are moving quickly with this glue as well. Um, another thing that I will do with Fabric Fusion is if I have a slight um, like divot or I have you know a piece of cork that is it doesn't line up perfectly kind of like right there I don't know if you can see that but like the corks are not lined up super perfectly and you can fill in those holes with this glue so I would just dab a bunch on and then gently wipe get the excess and then just being really careful I would quickly wipe across without applying a lot of pressure and it's going to fill in any gaps that you have down there. And then of course go back and wipe it off. So that's how I use the Fabric Fusion to seal my edges. And again, it dries kind of glossy and clear. Um I don't have anything over here that's already done, but you can see it's got a slight sheen to it, and that's how it'll look when it's dry. And so I find that if I don't want to deal with putting um, leather edge paint and taking the time, especially because on a wallet like this, if I leather edge painted it, I would want to paint, you know, the tops of the, uh, the tops of the cash lot all the way around. I would want to paint every single raw edge, and that would just add so, so much time for me. And the glue works so much quicker on wallets like these because, like you just saw it, I, now I'm done. Um, I will say that when I'm constructing these wallets, I do the glue on the, ed on the inside edges and on the tops here as I'm constructing because it's easier than waiting until the end. Otherwise, you can get glue and it'll make a mess. So as I'm in the middle of my construction, I'm doing all of these. And then at the very end, I do the outside edge. Now, if I want to get fancy and finish the edges with leather edge paint, um, sometimes I will do that. Usually I do it on my pieces that have beige on the edges, and it just provides a really nice just edge. I mean, for lack of a better way to describe it, it, it seals all the raw edges, and then if you can get it to lay nicely while you're painting it, it looks really smooth and just very very professional um i would i got this from fabric funhouse and this is this is an 18 set and i discussed it in my last video but this is kind of uh just a, a great box of colors because you can mix the colors together and make the color that you need so like on this blue tall wallet for me, I always call this blue aqua, but when I was mixing up the colors of paint, it's more of kind of like a steel gray blue. 
And so I don't know if you can catch the edge. There you go. So I, I mixed up the color by mixing the white, the gray, and the blue. And I got this color that matches pretty darn well to this blue. And I do like the way that it looks. It, it creates that nice professional finish. It's just weird to me because I never have matching edges. So it's just um, something new for me to get used to. Um, and so the way that I mixed it is I just found, this is actually um, the top to a fence post. We have a fence door that we were supposed to install. We just haven't done it yet. And I was searching for something to mix the paint in. So I just use this for now. But I think getting like some little small clear um, ramekins that have lids that screw down would be really great because otherwise it's just going to dry and you can't save it. Um, but yeah, so I used this. I just kind of mixed until I got the color that I wanted and then I applied my edges. Um, the only problem with creating your own colors is, again, once it dries, then you have to like get your formula down. And I mean, I just kind of wing most things in life and I was just dumping and pouring. So I have no idea how I actually made this color, but I digress. Um, so yeah, the way that I use these edge paints is you have to use a base coat first and so you can get it in a bunch of different sizes so I've got this little tiny guy medium and then also they have it in these big guys here if you're doing a lot of a lot of um, edge painting but so what you do is you apply this edge coat first well what I do is here is a raw or no, that one's already painted it's already painted okay here is a raw edge tall wallet and so what I would do to prepare for my max or for my edge coat is just like when I'm gluing, I would burn all of my edges and get them as flush with each other as possible. And then you just take your edge paint um, base coat rather and you just gently roll it on the cool part about this just like with the the glue with the fabric fusion is if you have anywhere that it's not quite flush it's gonna fill in so you can see where it, it filled in the gap that is right here it's along these along this layer here um, because it, I just didn't get it flush when I cut it but I knew that when I leather edge painted it I'd be able to fill that gap in and so you just go around your whole piece like that and you want to make sure that you are keeping it as smooth as possible because if you don't keep it smooth, what's going to happen is what happened on this. So obviously you cannot feel this, but there are ridges and bumps here from where the cork kind of peeled and pilled up whenever I was rubbing the tool across it. And so what it does is it creates little hard pieces. And so that's what this is for which is super fine grit sandpaper and you would just sand the edges down so that it creates a nice smooth edge and then if you needed to like sometimes I like to do two layers of the base coat or you can just skip the two layers and go straight to the color so this one here is already prepped. I have used base coat. I have already sanded it. And so the next step is going to be to use the color. And you apply the color the same way that you apply the clear or any other gloss or anything like that. It's the same thing. I'm just gonna dip. Oh, I can't get it open, but. Yeah, you're just going to dip in there and then wipe it across. Let me just grab it. 
I thought that I had it out, but I don't. Oh. Duh, I can just use this one. Or maybe I should do gray. Ooh, yeah. So I'm gonna do gray on the edge of this. This is one of Fabric Funhouse's The Sandstone Cork, and I love it. And then the gray will match my zipper here. So, I'm just gonna dip and wipe. I did read on Giardini's page on their website that you can actually water down the paint if you want to, to get it to a viscosity that you find is easiest to work with. And then usually after I paint, sometimes it, you know, it gets it onto the side. So you have to just wipe. And I generally just use my fingertip to wipe that off. So I've got a pretty decent size gap here. So I'm gonna kind of let that paint build up. I have noticed that when I'm painting with black, it seems to to dry really quickly. Either that or it just kind of, it colors, it discolors the cork. So move quickly with black for sure. there so you get the idea so now it's gonna have a nice cool gray edge once it's all dry I can't tell if you guys can see this because the angle that it's at here but ta-da another product that I purchased on my own from Giardini or it's actually from the buckle guy .com. Um, I got this protecting gloss and so what I found is that when I'm using black, it kind of, it dries matte and I haven't had that issue with the beige. Like the beige, it looks like it dries nice and shiny. So with the protecting gloss, if you want your piece to be glossier or you want your edge to be glossy and not matte, this is what you would use this for. So you apply it just the same exact way as everything else. and then you let this dry. I have read that it takes about 20 minutes for the colors to dry. The base coat and the colors to dry, it takes about 20 minutes. And then Giardini recommends letting the protective gloss dry for 40 minutes. And so it goes on milky and it looks white and then it dries clear and then it will be glossy instead of matte. So I'm gonna let these dry and then I will come back and show you how everything looks. I let everything dry overnight actually just because I left the studio last night after I was done. And so here is the wallet that I did the protecting gloss on and it added a super nice bright sheen to it. And before I added this, I always thought that the beige was pretty glossy but after adding the protective gloss it is significantly shinier now um and then so here is the gray on the sandstone which i think looks pretty sharp uh something that i noticed when i was edge painting everything is that on the inside of the tall wallet you know you you insert this snap tab in between the two layers of the inner and the outer and so it leaves this funny gap here that isn't edge painted so i have to go back and edge paint that section 
And then I'm gonna try to show you, I don't know if you can see it, but you can kind of see that there, you can still see the lines from the cork layers here underneath all the paint. So I'm gonna go back and add a third layer and hopefully build this edge up just a little bit more and then that won't be obvious. Um, I, do, I don't think that my customers would really notice it but I do, so I'm gonna go back and fix that. Um, and then I got a little bit creative and I mixed some more colors and I created this really dark kind of plum purple to match this palm cork and painted this edge, which I think looks pretty cool too. It just, having the edges painted a color it just looks so different to me. So it's just something that I'm gonna have to get used to. But I think that it could be a lot of fun. And I went ahead and I prepped all of these other tall wallets that I have. And now I kind of am feeling a little inspired to make some crazy colors. Like I almost wanna to try to mimic the salmon color and edge paint this mint wallet in salmon. I think that would be super fun. And yeah, so that is the edge paint. Um, on a lot of these, I did two and three layers of just the base coat, and I have to go back now and sand them and smooth them out. Um, and then another technique that I read about on the Giardini website is if you have any weird areas, you can actually use heat. So you can use an iron at about 170 degrees and you can apply heat to this and it will smooth the paint out. So I want to try with a lighter and see if it will work that way. Okay, so I can see it kind of bubbling. It definitely heats it back up. It kind of just made it bubble the lighter did so I don't know maybe I did try it with the iron once a few weeks ago and what it mainly did was just reheat it and it just transferred the paint to my iron so that's not I haven't mastered that technique yet and then I think the lighter just kind of made it bubble it didn't really I don't know if you can pick that up but it didn't really do it didn't smooth it at all so Yes, obviously, remember that I am a total novice with this. This is really my first time. I mean, I've used leather edge paint, but not um, this much of it on this many pieces. So take all of this with a grain of salt and uh, play around on your own. But it is fun. It definitely adds a fun professional edge. Um, and it is also time consuming. So that's something else to consider. That you guys enjoyed that uh, quick tutorial video infomercial. I don't really know, whatever you want to call it, on the different types of glue that I use. Sorry about my dogs playing in the background, but they are having a happy Saturday, and I hope that you guys are too. Be sure to like, subscribe, share, comment, pin, um, all that. Definitely leave me a comment below. Let me know what your favorite type of glue is. And do you have any tips and tricks for working with Giardini? Um, as I've stated in the video, I'm definitely not a pro at it at all. So any tips are welcome. I hope that you guys have a wonderful day wherever you are. And uh, stay safe out there.